Book from Home Scams, How I Was Almost Scammed, and How You Can Protect Yourself. This is just to let you know that I have a lot of information in this presentation, not your typical PowerPoint that just has simple summaries and bullet points. You will see full email threads, you will see text messages, example of a fake check, letters, a lot of information will be provided, and I won't be narrating everything, but you might notice some things are blocked out where I only removed or covered portions that protect my own identity. But I made effort to show you a true example of what I experienced. The only outside source that I used is FTC.gov, which is the Federal Trade Commission. It's an excellent resource to better educate yourself on the scams that are out there and helpful tips on how to better protect yourself. Also know that this was a real scam that took place, but thankfully no money was lost in the scam and it ended up not being successful in the end. So how it all started, like a lot of us, we look online for available jobs, whether LinkedIn, Indeed.com. Now this particular example is from Indeed.com and it was a basic email notification I received to let me know that the customer service position was open. And so I clicked on the easily apply blue link within the notification. It seemed pretty straightforward and simple. And then once that was completed, I received another email letting me know that my application was received. Nothing really suspicious that stood out to me here, but as I go through this, you might notice a red flag that I didn't myself. So feel free to pause and take your time to inspect the examples that are provided here. Now I received this email on April 18th. I've highlighted the date above, mainly to point out how quickly these people move. In the end of the process, the check was confirmed to be a fraud on April 27th, so approximately 10 days. But this email is just to let me know that my application was approved for a virtual background slash interview online. And I've also highlighted the signature at the bottom here. There's some missing information. Usually if you're going to put a signature, you will have possibly your business hours, your office number or email to reach. You might even provide an 800 number associated with the business itself. This has literally no contact information provided. Of course, we do have the email up here that says ronaldben57ocean at gmail.com, but that's it. So becoming suspicious. Of course, I noticed several red flags, so I proceeded with caution. An unfortunate thing that scammers rely on is the emotional response of their victims. People looking for jobs, they might have bills stacking up. It's a scary world out there, especially with the pandemic taking place. A lot more people are working from home now. So they're counting on the desperation of people wanting that job or trying to get employment so they can pay their bills. And when that happens, their logic takes a back seat to that desperation and they're counting on that. I noticed several red flags, so I was cautious on here. Here's a pretty obvious one. Just one day after I received the email saying that I was going to have a virtual background check and an interview, an interview never took place, but one day later, I got the job. And they listed the essential duties and responsibilities right here. The verbiage seems pretty professional. It's very detailed of all the things that I would need to take on and be ready for, but I wasn't even interviewed. Another thing I'm pointing out here on the second half of that same email, they were wanting my full name, home address, apartment number, contact phone number, and current occupation. Now this information would be very useful for a scammer, but also if they didn't have that information on me, how could they have possibly performed a virtual background check? A little curious. Then I received a more casual email from the supposed Ronald Benson, and it just says, hi, so-and-so. I blocked out my own name, obviously. It's good to have you on board. Do watch out for my email and phone conversation on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Phone conversation never took place. 
the offer letter. So let's jump into this. So, April 21st, I'm receiving an email, and the verbiage actually seems pretty standard with an actual legitimate business because they like to share their vision statement or mission statement, uh, what it means to be a team for part of their team, and the kind of standards that they would hold you up to. And this is the second half of that same email, but I find it interesting that even though there's an offer letter attached to this very email, and I've already gotten the job somehow, there's one question here that says, in one sentence, write why you're a good fit for this position. Now I know in the process of your employment, there's evaluations and performance reviews where you must continually prove yourself. But if you're receiving a job offer, you shouldn't also be receiving interview questions in that same email. And here is the offer letter. It is two pages, so this is just the first page. And it might seem unusual that this stands out to me, but I've noticed that there seems to be different font sizes and font types within this letter. Most businesses like consistency, and it can come down to the very preferred font type, size, and color that they like to use. And yes, it does make it look more professional, but it's also a security feature. Because when you notice documents that have all kinds of different fonts and sizes and it seems a little all over the place, it's a good indication that it's a lazy copy paste job for multiple sources and that should raise a flag. Also notice we have Ronald Benson, HR manager. Well, in some of the emails that he signed, he was a recruiter. Okay, we can have different hats, but as we go through, you'll see some more red flags here. All right, second page, I'm not going to read through the full letter, but you're welcome to pause and read through this. I'm seeing a signature of a Matthew Wilson. I have no idea who this is. The person I correspond with up to this point was Ronald Benson. So now we're having another person included out of nowhere. Um, let's see here. Now prior to this stage, in a normal situation, I would have already checked the website of the business. I would have known who the owners were, who the you know hiring managers were. Usually they provide an about page on their website that lets you know who is who and what job responsibilities belong to what person. None of this was done at this point. So with my suspicion growing, it was already there but I was kind of cruising along just to see how far this would go. But with any email I would receive that lists the detailed responsibilities, I would often copy paste that exact list and acknowledge that I understood it or include a question below that responsibility in a different color, just to make sure I was very clear and that expectations were set and that I delivered what they wanted from me. So this is another email from Ronald, and I won't read through the full thing, but I will go ahead and narrate what I have in red font here. So the nature of this email is to let me know that I'm to expect a package, and they provided a tracking number that I blocked out, that will contain a check for $4,500, where specific amounts were to be used to purchase required equipment to perform the job. I was also informed that communication has already been taken place with their supplier, regarding the equipment that I was to purchase with funds from that check. I found this very unusual. Uh, why wouldn't the company just purchase and track their own equipment? So there might be scenarios where a local distributor might provide some equipment, but to give me the money to purchase on behalf of the company as a new employee, it just seems incredibly unprofessional. They should have had from their corporate office already purchased the track the serial numbers and everything tracked not only to save their assets but as an important security feature and you're welcome to pause and read through this full email if you like this is the second half of that same email and i just presented do you notice any additional red flags that i haven't pointed out you probably will see some i also included that out of that forty five hundred dollars 
the amount that I was to keep for myself as payment was $850. The rest was going to go towards uh, a laptop, a certain phone, and that sort of thing. All right, so like I mentioned previously, a typical habit that I do anyway is copy paste my responsibilities and in a different font color, ask any questions that I have. So I went ahead and did that and this is April 25th where I sent that. And I recapped that I was to expect a delivery with a tracking number and I included that in there. Uh, deposit the funds into my bank account so I did put in blue font. Oftentimes funds can be made available quickly. However, my bank will put this amount on hold to ensure that it's real and valid check before any transactions take place. I will be sure to update you on the status once it is deposited. So I've already pointed out to this person that it's not going to be an instant turnaround. We wanna make sure that this is valid. So then the another list on the responsibilities for me, it says, the list of equipment I'm to pay for with the funds are provided to your associate gadget supplier. So I asked, uh, who is my gadget supplier? I would like a business name. Like, where am I supposed to expect this equipment from? The items are a mobile phone, printer, Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, and others. Well, we usually don't end with and others. It should be very detailed to every single item that I should be purchasing. So my response to that was, please list all items I am to expect to pay for and receive. Pretty standard to me. Send the gadget supplier the funds for the equipment which will be shipped to my address so I can have enough tools to start training work fully by the next week. So I put in blue, ideally once everything is received and validated, I will be eager to begin work and training. I will be sure to keep you up to date on the status of the check and equipment delivery. Just acknowledging that there is a timeline and that I will pay attention to what's expected. Now, the next thing listed here, it says deduct my weekly salary of $850 and $30 for transport expenses from the total amount of $4,500 received on the check. Didn't really have anything to put there for myself. The number seven, it says $3,620 is to be sent to the supplier via deposit to their account. Then I put, is there a particular reason your organization isn't paying your supplier directly for equipment? Then in a paragraph below in blue, I was very obvious. I even said that there was a previous scam that was similar to this. So I'll read through it here. Thank you in advance for any clarification you can provide. Interestingly enough, years ago, I fell victim to a money scam where I was sent a check for exactly $4,500. After further investigation, the bank determined it to be a false check, and I had sent portions of my own personal money, causing me to take a loss. The nature of many of my questions is just me doing my due diligence to avoid falling victim to future scams. So right here, I'm kind of calling this person out and mentioned scam several times in this very email. Now the response, I won't read through it yet. I'll go ahead and just read what I put in red here. Um, does this response seem odd to you? Even with different purchasing options, the owning company usually tracks the serial numbers for each specific item, not only to protect their physical equipment, but as an important aspect of security. And I will go ahead and read some of this here. As you're aware, this job position is remote and we choose to employ the service of individual suppliers in each state to have the equipment sent to our workers. Oftentimes items get damaged in the process of sending from our headquarters as sometimes it takes up to a week for items to be delivered to our workers in far distances, which is why we contact individual suppliers and let our workers handle the payment and receiving of items. It, it seems like a sort of professional response, but honestly still does not make sense to me because the amount of time it's going to take for that check to clear compared to the amount of time for it to be shipped from their headquarters, it's, it's just not making sense here. But it says, starting from next week, you will only receive checks of $850 in your mailbox. The items to be received are all brand new, a new Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, one HP printer, and one Wi-Fi router plus cable. Okay, so 
at least they gave me a few more items as opposed to just vaguely stating this laptop and others. Still not buying it. So package and check was received. This is just a quick picture of the UPS package I received at my door pretty quickly. I blocked out a lot of the tracking information on there just for safety's sake. Um, but it arrived pretty quickly. And I actually sent a photo of this package to this supposed Ronald Benson just so that he knew I did receive the package. So here's the wording of the email where I sent the photograph of the package. Hi, Ronald. Thank you so much for your prompt reply. The package is received and I have deposited it into my bank account. I will be sure to provide further updates as needed. But what I didn't tell Ronald was I actually called my bank in advance and said that I was suspicious of the scenario and I was suspicious of the check itself. It didn't look, it just, certain things didn't add up and you'll see the check here in a moment. So I already alerted my bank at the time of deposit. And then Ronald Benson sent this email. Hello, please provide me with a picture copy of the deposited receipt for records purposes. Then I responded, sure thing, I received an email notification from my bank confirming that it was received and is currently under review. Now be careful with this because I sent this email, but I did not provide the full email because if I provided the full email, the scammer could have had access to my bank account. This is just a fraction of what I shared. I did not give the full thing, but this was the real confirmation from my bank that says yes, the amount has been deposited and it's in pending status. And this is April 25th. And I'm sending the same day. All right, so the check itself. I'll go ahead and read through this. Um, so it's interesting how the LLC is located in California. Their bank is in Pennsylvania and the 57 Ocean Company is in Florida. And who is signing the check? It starts with a W but it would make sense to at least know who is signing the checks. I'm seeing a proof payment in the memo. It just, something seems funny about this. This is the reverse side of the check. Nothing really unusual stands out to me here. And I just blocked out my signature that I had to provide when I deposited it. And this is just a portion of the pay stub that was attached to the check. Really not a lot to look at. It just provides the LLC again and the LLC, which was located in California. And then it mentions the bank located in Pennsylvania. Nothing huge stands out to me here. And then just the reverse side of that same pay stub. Nothing too special about this picture. So bank confirmation. So you already know I called the bank in advance, let them know that I was a little suspicious of this. And I received a letter from the bank and I won't read through the full letter, but you are welcome to pause and read through it as well. But it just says, thankfully the bank placed a hold on the check so that no funds could be withdrawn until it was confirmed to be valid. This action helped to protect my account while they took the time to discover that the check was in fact a fraud. So this is not saying that the letter doesn't say that it's a fraud yet. It just says we're checking this out. We're, we're investigating this check. And then here is the information confirming that on April 27, 2023, the check was returned because it was confirmed to be altered slash fictitious. So this is just the copy of the check and more information regarding the fake check. So text messages. So throughout this process, at the point of when I received the check from UPS was when I started to receive text messages. So the timeline might back up a little bit here. All right, so I'll go ahead and read through some of this. It says, hello, how are you doing today? This is Ronald Benson. I'm contacting you about your customer service job position at 57 Ocean. I sent you an email in regards to your first week payment and instructions on your first assignment. I believe you received it. And my response was, thank you for the text notification. 
checking my email now. I received the email and will follow up with the instructions carefully. Thank you. Then he says, great, please keep an eye out for the package and let me know once you have the payment. And I received this text and I also received the check this same day. But I said, absolutely, I'm also working on a comprehensive email reply with some questions provided in blue font. Thank you. So I'm mentioning that email I read through where I literally mentioned a scam in the body of the email. All right, so, hello, did you receive my email response? Also, your payment has been delivered. I believe that you have it now. I responded with yes, thank you, and I provided further info via email. Then below that it says, great, the funds should be available later today, tomorrow morning, or in 48 hours. Please keep me posted once funds are available for the next step, thanks. Notice how the communication seems to be getting a bit urgent. So this is just one day later. April 26, good morning. I respond, good morning. Ronald says, I hope you had a good night. Please check your account to confirm the fund's availability. I'm sure it will be there. I responded with, thank you. No, the funds are still in pending status. Once made available, I will most definitely let you know. Response was, oh, if it doesn't become available today, I guess it will be tomorrow morning. Please keep me posted later on. All right, so I decided to ask some standard questions that I should have asked earlier in the process. So I'll go ahead and read through this here. For checks of this amount, the bank holds status impending until they confirm that it's a valid check. I can call my bank and request an ETA. Ronald responds with, okay, good. Then I reply, does your organization have a corporate headquarters? I just want to see if I can speed up the approval process with my bank. Is there any further information you could provide to me that I may share with my bank? And Ronald's response was, hello, I believe you can just call and ask them about the policy. It'll look suspicious if you try to speed up the approval. Okay, interesting that they're pointing out that it would look suspicious, although this Ronald is trying to hurry the approval process of this check. All right, so, this person seems inconvenienced by the time that it takes for a check of that size to be verified and approved. If this was standard practice for the business, it shouldn't have been a surprise that the verification takes some time. Also note that the date of the thread shows April 27th, the same date that my bank already confirmed that the check was a fraud. So here I'll read through some of my response here. So I already placed a call and they said they simply are holding the check until it's confirmed as valid. The ETA I received was in approximate five days, but I will be checking my account every day and keep you up to date in the progress. So April 27th, I received from Ronald, good day. I reply, hi, how are you doing? I'm great, what about you? Good, thank you, can I help you with something? Ronald then says, I am checking to see if the funds came through by any chance. The five days delay is more like a week and I still have to train you for two days. It's a whole lot of delay. Okay, well, speaking from personal experience as a workforce trainer myself, if you receive an approval letter and you have the position, there's probably some information I could have received and been trained on already at this point. All right, so as you can see in this text, I'm no longer attempting to play naive for this scammer. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and read through this here. Understandable, but my bank must be sure that I'm not being scammed. They are the ones in charge of clearing the check. Since I accepted the offer letter, you are free to provide me with reading materials so I can prepare myself. This delay could have been avoided if your organization went about more professional methods of ensuring employees receive the equipment they need. Have you experienced delays like this with other employees? I'd like to locate you on LinkedIn. Could you share your profile? No, this is the first time and it's frustrating. Most of our workers get their cash immediately after 24 hours or by latest 48 hours. Never heard of five days hold, plus the deposit day, making it six. The scammer's response is laughable. The check was already confirmed to be a fraud. There was no unauthorizing the check. But I'll read through this here. Could you please share the name of your supplier? Also, I would like to locate you on LinkedIn. What is your profile? 
Also, could you provide me with some training information? I can read and make sure I'm prepared. Then I get the response of, OK, hold on. Also, what is the name signed on the check? I see it starts with a W, but I can't quite make out the signature. Maybe it will help if I can provide the name of who signed the check. Then his response was, these questions are out of the ordinary. It simply shows you have no trust in this position. Sorry, but I'll have to ask the accounts department to unauthorize the check. <laughs> oh, yeah. I find your behavior incredibly suspicious. And the text messages end there. I don't know what I was hoping for, but I was hoping for maybe some more evidence to hopefully bust the scammer, but it is pretty hard to catch these people. So let's turn the page to FTC, Federal Trade Commission. What is it and how can it help you? I simply Googled FTC and we will get more into this, but the first thing I did was I clicked on that report fraud link because this just happened and I wanna report what happened. But I'll read off to the side. It says the Federal Trade Commission is an independent agency of the United States government whose principal mission is the enforcement of civil antitrust law and the promotion of customer protection. The FTC shares jurisdiction over federal civil, and civil antitrust enforcement with the Department of Justice Antitrust Division. So FTC.gov, this is a very useful resource, but I went ahead and clicked on report fraud. And it took me to this page and I won't walk you through the entire process in this presentation. Feel free to click on it and check it out. But I could have clicked on report now in the upper right hand corner or in the body of the web page. They would have taken me to the same place. And the prompts are pretty easy to follow. You just click on the buttons that apply to you. But if you do need further guidance or walkthrough, if you needed to report a situation on your own, there is the FTC chat option located in the upper right hand corner so you could get live support as well to make sure that you properly fill out these forms. All right, so I went back to the home page um, because you can search for similar scams that have already been reported. I went straight to that little search bar off to the side, typed work from home scams. And I was taken to this page that lists a quite a variety of scams. And I scrolled a little while until I found one that said job scams that seemed to closely align to what just happened to me. And I'll just read through this little summary here. So when I clicked on job scams, I saw scammers advertise jobs the same way honest employers do. So there's a lot of similarities between their verbiage, their job responsibilities, even the vision, vision statement that they try to use. So they put it online or in ads, job sites, social media, even in newspapers and sometimes on TV and radio. But they promise you a job, but what they want is your money and your personal information. There are some examples of job scams and advice on how to avoid them. So they're broken down into different categories below, and I won't go too far in depth, but I definitely recommend that you pay this website a visit, even if you haven't fallen victim to a scam yet, because it will just better prepare you. So they provide the examples of job scams, like the work from home job scams. And feel free to pause and read through this on your own time if you like. But this description aligns pretty closely to what just happened to me. And here's some helpful tips on how to avoid a job scam. Again, take your time, pause this presentation and read through this if you like. A lot of helpful tips here. But here's a page that I was, I shouldn't say page, but here's a portion of the website that I was really happy to see because not only did they provide ways to avoid scams, but they also provided more reliable resources on finding jobs like usajobs.gov, career one stop, usa.gov. Uh, these are all excellent resources if you're hunting for a job. There's also a link that mentions, uh, also when you're applying for a job, an employer may do background check. Read employer background checks and your rights to learn more. So again, excellent website to visit. Also, there's an article on what to do if you ended up paying a scammer. 
how to contact your bank and put a hold on the check or to cancel a check, that sort of thing. So very helpful information here. All right, so this is a summary. I try not to make it too long for you here, but please check out ftc.gov. It's very helpful, especially if you're out there hunting for a job. And I wish you the best of luck in your journey towards your new career. Thank you for your time.